and welcome back. I guess I haven't scared you away yet. <laughs> We're finishing up chapter two with some more rules for differentiation, but before we dive in, let's just review what we learned last time. If you have a function that's just a constant, say y equals four, the derivative of that is zero. If you have a function that is just a single variable, then the derivative of that single variable is one. More complicated, if you have some function that's made up of a lot of little functions being added or subtracted from each other, then the derivative of that is just the derivative of each of the pieces. So we're gonna multiply the exponent times the coefficient and then drop the exponent by one. Minus six x minus six plus, this is a constant. So the derivative of a constant is zero. And you can either write the zero or not. So moving on, we'll learn a couple new differentiation rules. First is the product rule. So if you take the derivative of two functions that are being multiplied together, what you do is you take the derivative of the first and you multiply it by the second, just the plain old second. Then you take the derivative of the second function and multiply it by the first. So the derivative of the first times the second plus the derivative of the second times the first. Let's practice that. First, we're going to take the derivative of the first function, 2x minus 1. So the derivative of 2x minus 1 is just uh, 2. And then multiply it by the first function. Derivative of the first times the second plus, now we take the derivative of the second function, which is just one, and multiply that times the first. And we can distribute the two, we can distribute the one, clean it up a bit, and there we have the derivative 4x minus nine. Let's try another one. We've got two functions being multiplied together. So in order to find the derivative, we'll take the derivative of the first, which would be two x plus three, multiply that times the second. Plus, now the derivative of the second function, which is four x times the first. Stop. This is the derivative. You only clean it up and simplify it if you need to, if you need to, for a multiple choice question or if simplification makes further analysis easier. I mean, this is kind of a bulky uh, equation, so to clean it up might make life easier if you have the rest of the problem to solve. So just for the fun of it, let's expand this and combine like terms. Let's try it with some trig functions. Process is the same. The derivative equals the derivative of the first. So the derivative of sine is cosine. So the derivative of two sine is two cosine times the second plus the derivative of the second. Remember what the derivative of cosine x is? The derivative of cosine x is negative sine x. So we're actually then subtracting sine of x, derivative of the second, times the first. If you wanna clean that up a little bit, it would look like two times the quantity cosine squared minus sine squared. Next one, pause the video for just a minute and see if you can do this one on your own. Just a reminder before you do, the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. All right, see what you can do. How did you do? Compare it with my answer. 
derivative of the first times the second plus derivative of the second times the first. Now be careful. Don't confuse the product rule with the limit properties. We could take limit properties and if two functions were being multiplied together, we could distribute sort of the limit through. But you cannot, you cannot do that with derivatives. You have to use derivative of the first times the second plus derivative of the second times the first. The quotient rule. I'll be honest with you, most people hate it because it's kind of bulky, but whatever, it's important. So the quotient rule is when one function is being divided by another. So you've got the bottom function times the derivative of the top minus the top times the derivative of the bottom over the bottom squared. So there's an easy little thing that I use that a lot of calculus people use to remember this. If the top function is high and the bottom function is low, then it's low d high minus high d low all over low low, where d stands for derivative. So the low function times the derivative of the high function minus the high function times the derivative of the low function all over the low function squared. Let's give it a shot. For the quotient rule, especially when you're starting out, it's helpful to just give yourself a blank slate and then we'll just fill it in. So first thing we do is low, that's x minus five, d high, the derivative of the top function, minus high, just the top function, times d low, the derivative of the low function, all over the low function squared. Low d high minus high d low, all over low low. Again, stop here, that's the derivative. Only clean it up if you have to. All right, let's try this one. I think I'm gonna write and talk as I do this one. Give myself a fraction line. So I've got g prime of x equals low, just the low function written out, d high, the derivative of the top, that's just e to the x again, low d high minus high, that's e to the x, d low, the derivative of the low function is 2x all over low low x squared minus 1 squared. How do we do? Pretty good. And we'll stop here. Before we dive into this one, let me remind you that the derivative of ln of x is 1 over x. Okay, so pause the video. See if you can figure out this one on your own. How'd you do? So here's the low function times the derivative of the high. Derivative of ln x is 1 over x. And then high, derivative of x minus 2 is 1 over low low. Let's throw some trig functions in there, because who doesn't love a trig function? I'll write this one again, and then we'll check ourselves. So f prime of x equals low one plus cosine x d high. The derivative of sine is cosine minus high, that's sine of x, d low. So the derivative of one is zero. Derivative of cosine x is negative sine x all over one plus cosine x squared. Shall we check? All right, good. Now again, that's the derivative. You can stop. However, oh, you can't see my words. However, if this is a multiple choice question and this isn't the answer, well, let's clean it up a bit. So sine times sine, that's sine squared, but the negative and the negative will be positive. And then we can distribute the cosine x through. And let's just leave the bottom as it is for a second. 
Oh, look at what we found here. This is fun. <laughs> Cosine squared plus sine squared. You know what that is? That equals one. That's one of your trig identities. And then cosine x plus one over one plus cosine x squared. We can cancel one of those from the top and bottom. Similar to the product rule, if you're taking the derivative of one function divided by another, you cannot simply do derivative of top over derivative of bottom. That's not allowed. Please be careful about that. So let's put it together here. We're going to find an equation of the tangent line to the graph of f at 0, 1 for the function f of x equals cosine x over 1 minus sine x. So again, if we're trying to find the equation of a tangent line, we need a point and a slope. The point we have, they told us in the problem, is 0, 1. The slope is the derivative. Because cosine is being divided by 1 minus sine x, we need to use the quotient rule. Low d high minus high d low, all over low low. Wowza. Now, no need to clean it up because what we're going to do is just plug in 0 for all of our x's like that. Now, 1 minus the sine of 0. Sine of 0 is 0. Sine of 0 is 0. Cosine of 0 is 1. Cosine of 0 is 1. But we have a negative times a negative. So that's going to be positive. So we have 0 plus 1 on the top. And then 1 minus sine of 0 on the bottom. So we have a derivative or a slope of 1. And now we just stick that into point slope form. All of the trig functions also have derivatives, and good to have these memorized. That'll make your problem solving so much faster. So let's go over them real quick. Derivative of sine is cosine. Derivative of cosine is negative sine. Derivative of tangent is secant squared. Derivative of cosecant is negative cosecant cotangent. Derivative of secant is secant tangent and derivative of cotangent is negative cosecant squared. There's a lot of patterns to these, but the one I want to show you to help you memorize is the negatives happen when the top, or when the front letter, sorry, is a C. So cosecant becomes a negative. Cosine becomes a negative. Cotangent becomes a negative. So work on memorizing those, please. In case you don't want to memorize tangent of x, though, I welcome Jim here with us so that you can watch me take the derivative of tangent x a long way. So tangent x is the same thing as sine over cosine. That's a fraction. So if we're taking the derivative of sine over cosine, we would need to use the quotient rule, low d high minus high d low all over low low. And as we clean that up a little bit, we get cosine squared plus sine squared over cosine squared. Cosine squared plus sine squared equals 1. So this is 1 over cosine squared x, which is the same thing as secant squared x. Let's use these trig derivatives on some problems. So if f of x is x minus tangent x, what's the derivative? Take the derivative of x and the derivative of tangent x, and you get 1 minus secant squared. g of x is x times secant x. These are two little functions being multiplied together, so you need the product rule for that. Derivative of the first times the second plus derivative of the second times the first. If you want to clean this up a little bit, uh, one thing you can do is these guys have a secant in common. You could kind of pull that out, and that's what it would look like. Here we have another fraction, so we're going to have to use the quotient rule, 
low d high minus high d low all over low low. Give that a try, see how you do. Compare it to what I've got on the screen. How did you do? Shall we clean it up a little bit? We can multiply the signs together. We can distribute the cosine of x through. Oh, look what I found again. Sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals one. We can actually keep going on this one too, watch this. I can split this into two different fractions. One over sine x squared minus cosine x over sine squared x. One over sine squared x, that's the same as cosecant squared x, and cosine over sine squared is the same thing as cosecant cotangent. Now, that was super complicated, and there were a lot of trig identities to remember, so let me show you another way, okay? I'm going to change my original function, and I'm going to break it up again into two fractions. One over sine x is cosecant x. Cosine x over sine x is cotangent x. And then using my derivatives that we've just learned, I can take the derivative of cosecant and the derivative of cotangent. And look, I got the same thing. So that complicated mess in front of you, I will sign off and I'll see you in the next lesson.